Hey, it's Friday night, and it's uh, uh, nearly Saturday morning. <laughs> I've got one one minute in before it's Saturday morning. It looks like I need to to back up just a little bit so that I can uh, get a little bit of light on my face, and you can see me. Uh, but uh, I'm enjoying Friday night. Stayed up a little bit late. Uh, was doing some writing to a couple people encouraging them in the Lord and uh, and I actually watched a very deep movie with uh, Olivia this evening uh, very uh, intellectually stimulating if you've ever seen the movie called Mall Cop okay <laughs> uh, first time I saw that movie and wanted to watch a, a lighthearted movie with Livy she loves watching love stories and uh, I was like, I'm not watching another love story uh, with Olivia this evening. And uh, excuse me, <laughs> but I guess that's what happens when you stay up till midnight, huh? Uh, but uh, reading through the uh, hello, <laughs> it's funny that the uh, the lighting can't can't hold itself sometimes. But uh, reading through the Old Testament, uh, there was uh, some great uh, lessons through the Old Testament about the uh, dietary laws, about uh, and uh, about what you could eat and what you couldn't eat in under the Jewish dietary laws. So, although. Uh, as Christians, we are not under the Jewish dietary laws. We're not under the law that was given to them. Uh, and yet, uh, many of the things that they were forbidden to eat uh, are scientifically found to be not good for us. I mean, the fish that they were told, don't eat the fish without the scales, those fish are bottom dwellers without the scales. They eat the poop off the bottom of the seabed, like those catfish that so many people love to eat. They're poop suckers. <laughs> so if you like uh, animals that suck poop, like your shrimp and your lobster and your uh, bass and your carp and uh, those other kind of slimy creatures uh how about calamari that's another one of those dishes that uh definitely does not make the dietary law for the sea creatures why because they suck the poop off the bottom of the ocean <laughs> does god have wisdom in what he's asked man to eat yes he does believe me uh, we've had too many people in our country die because they eat pig. Okay? Sorry. I eat, I eat pigs. I eat ham. I have a... Uh, funny that, that for the, the traditional Easter Sunday meal is a pig saying, we're not part of that Jewish guy, Jesus, really. Because you know what? He's not eating pigs. He's never ate a pig. He's not going to have pig waiting for us there in heaven. Don't expect that to be on the uh, the uh, table at the wedding feast. I'm sorry for all my Christian friends. I don't expect to see the pig there. Although uh, I'm not under the dietary law, it makes good sense to stay away from those things that God told the Jewish people, don't eat these things. Uh, it, set yourself apart from these things. God called them detestable, okay? Do you want to eat detestable things? Or do you want to be holy, which is what God said? He would want us to be holy, just like he is holy. Uh, and so, uh, God, I hope, will give you wisdom in your diet. Uh He's made some great vegetables for us. I love uh, the uh, squash, which my wife doesn't make. Uh, 
she doesn't make uh, a lot of the uh, big vegetables like squash and uh, some other stuff that are big like squash. I guess there's a lot of things uh, like squash. They're, they're all like pumpkin. Uh, they're all, those are all really the same family. But uh, very healthy for you. Zucchini and things like that. Uh, and the children of Israel that went into Babylon asked for a uh, menu of just good vegetables and they were stronger than the best of the Babylonians. Why? God honored their diet. And uh, so if you choose to eat good things, and you ask God to bless that. I think God will honor that. And uh, you know what? There was a, a great psalm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop into this psalm really quick. That was Psalm 26. I read a psalm yesterday. And, and the psalms usually aren't that long. The psalm yesterday was a little bit longer than most. But this one is great. Psalm 26 says, Vindicate me, Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for I have always been mindful of your unfailing love and have lived in reliance on your faithfulness. Let that be said about us, that we would do that, that we would be found to have been reliant on his faithfulness and I, I pray that for all of us. Do not sit with the deceitful, nor do I associate with hypocrites. I abhor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. I wash my hands of I wash my hands in innocence, and I go about your altar, Lord, proclaiming aloud your praise and telling of all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house where you live and dwell where your glory dwells. Do not take away your soul uh, along with sinners, my life with those who are bloodthirsty. I'm sorry, let me, see. let me read that again. Do not take away my soul along with the sinners, my life with those who are bloodthirsty, and whose hands are wicked schemes, whose right hand hands are full of bribes, lead a blameless life. I lead a blameless life. Deliver me and be merciful to me. My feet stand on level ground in the great congregation. I will praise the Lord. And that's a great thing to do, to live in a place where we can praise the Lord. I'm praying that uh, you're praising the Lord. Uh, I'm going to look over at my time. And actually, I can't see my time. I'm sorry. I'll try to get in 